I uh, just want to say welcome to How to Win Your Next Screenplay Contest. I'm Robert McCullough. I've written and produced dozens of TV series, sold several pilots, and I've had actually several feature scripts optioned by the major studios. And I'm Suzanne Herrera McCullough. Um, I began uh, my career as an actress, or as my family calls me, I was almost, almost famous. And as an actress on sets, I, I realized that the true creative power in film and television lies with the writers. And I have always loved to write. So that became my passion. So now between us, we have more than 300 produced film and television credits. Right. And before we get started, I think we should explain really why we created the Santa Barbara International Screenplay Awards and the Wiki Screenplay Contest. Uh, several years ago, uh, one of our family members asked us uh, what we thought about online screenplay contests. Right. And so we did some research and we were amazed to find so many out there that we'd never even heard about and that none of them were being run by anybody with any professional film or television experience. And they also never managed to actually identify their contest judges. A lot of the contests promise introductions to managers, agents, and producers. But what is really, but what really takes is a good script. Uh, with a good script, things can start to happen. And that's what we're all here about. Right. As a producer, one of my favorite things is, was always discovering new writing talent. It was really great fun for me personally to see the look on a new writer's face when he or she saw their first script turned into a finished film production. Since then, after developing the Santa Barbara International Screenplay Awards and the Wiki Screenplay Contest, we've provided feedback on more than 20,000 screenplay and television pilots. Right. That's we, incredible. We've read a lot of scripts, that's for sure. Uh, and that gives us a very good idea of what it takes to actually win any one of today's leading contests, including one of our own contests. When we created our screenplay contest, we only had one thing in mind, was to help writers bring their work up to the professional level as quickly as possible. For us, it's all about the writing. We don't make false promises about getting you an agent or a manager or introducing you to producers, because that's not really how the business works. At times, agents and producers have reached out to us about some of our winning writers, but we don't pretend to represent writers and we never send material out without a writer's express permission. Our sole purpose, our mission, is to help you develop the very best script possible. So please be careful of any contests that make promises or of representation or things like will produce a script because those are often promises that they can't keep. Excellent, for that, absolutely. The purpose of today's webinar is simple. We're gonna give you our personal insights into exactly what you need to do if you wanna win your next screenplay contest. So the first question we need to, answer, to ask is, why enter any contest at all? Are they really worth the effort and the expense? You know, the old school traditional way of breaking into the business as a writer was to have some sort of an inside track. We didn't have that. No, and that requires uh, having an uncle who's a producer, or better yet, an uncle who owns a studio. That would be nice. Back in the, back in the days, it was a great system for everybody who was connected, but it wasn't so wonderful for anybody else trying to break in. Actually, that was the only way to break in yeah. many years ago because the business was so much smaller at that time. So the answer to the question, are, are contests worth it? And the answer is yes, they're actually a great way to get noticed with the right kind of feedback and guidance, and they can really help you to bring your script up to the professional level. But you need to have a good idea of what to expect when you enter a competition. And there are some basic things you really need to look for. Any written feedback you pay for needs to be more than just mere coverage. It should be in-depth analysis of the major elements present in any good script. Then do a little research. Make sure the contest you're entering has some name recognition. There are a lot of very obscure contests right. out there. Uh, and that often has a lot to do with where the contest is administered or who's behind it. So you need to find out who's going to be reading and judging your script. You always want to be sure you're entering a contest which is managed by people with a background as writers or producers in the film and television industry. And of course, the judges in a contest you enter, they should all have a similar background with produced credits that you can actually see on imdb.com or they should have a history of their own successes in major screenplay competitions and 
generally scripts and development. When you win a contest based in a major production center that involves industry professionals with produced credits, that's the best indication that your script is ready for professional development in the marketplace. What you don't want is to get involved with contests operated by inexperienced people who just happen to like movies a lot. Winning one of those contests just doesn't mean much and the feedback you get from them probably won't be very helpful in the long run. That leads to the next question, of course, which contests are worth entering or not? And which contests are actually legitimate? When you're trying to figure that out, which contests are worth your time, money, and effort, you need to ask some questions. Things like, do they identify their judges? Do they have actual produced mainstream film or television credits? Are there judges members of the professional industry guild like the Screen Actors Guild, Directors Guild, or Writers Guild of America? Or are they just film students, aspiring writers with no credits of their own? Right. And does the contest provide impartial feedback or analysis from people who've actually been in the business of writing and selling their writing? Good written feedback can often help you to quickly bring your script up to the professional level. And you need to know it from professionals who know what they're talking about. Another way to determine if a contest is legit is to look at their coverage, which means they should show the samples of their feedback. Right. We have, for example, we have samples of the analysis we provide on all of our website materials. So you want to find out how a contest actually assesses the scripts that are entered. Is it just a score sheet? Sometimes it looks like a middle schooler's report card, just a bunch of boxes checked off. Or do they actually discuss elements within your script in some detail? Then are they responsive to your emails and your questions? Do they answer emails the same day or do you hear crickets after uh, you've sent them their money? Right, exactly. We try to respond within, well, 12 hours at the maximum. Try, we, we try really hard. Yeah, we have a whole team of people just making sure we're staying up to up to up to speed with all the writers and all the issues people have. There are even a handful of new contests on the scene which promise this hyper-objective scoring of your scripts based, based upon some computer algorithms or a, quote, proprietary technology that propels your winning script directly into the hands of producers and studio moguls. It sounds nice, but the truth is there are no such technologies and no computer algorithm has ever identified a screenplay that actually became a produced film. The writing, the assessment and the development of screenplays is not driven by artificial intelligence. Let me, let's tell you this right now. <laughs> Maybe, you know, 50 years from now, it's a purely human process and it takes people working together, applying subjective judgment to certain objective standards to bring a screenplay to the professional level. Yeah, artificial and intelligence are two words that really shouldn't go together. So when considering which, uh, which contests to enter, you want to look carefully at the reputation among writers like yourself. Does the contest have a track record of positive testimonials from writers who've actually benefited by winning or placing as a finalist in that contest? You know, any legitimate contest should have dozens of verifiable testimonials either on their website or on their film freeway listing. So before entering a contest, be sure you understand what the contest is all about and what it's offering. And be sure to review the contest rules. This is critically important, particularly those rules about page count limits. Uh, we often get scripts that are 300 pages long and they simply are disqualified. You don't wanna do that. You wanna be sure you're also entering the right contest for your script's particular genre. There are many contests specifically for action thriller, historical dramas, rom-coms, and the list goes on. And you want to submit the right category for your script. Right. And then be sure to convert your script to a PDF file before submitting it. You know, if you submit a script in a Word file or as a final draft uh, writing program file, you really do run the risk of being disqualified and losing your entry fee. And let's and now let's talk about the script itself. You need to know what contest readers expect. You know, your cover page is one thing everybody expects to look a certain way. So it needs to be properly formatted. The only things that should be on your cover page are your title, your name, and your contact information. But try not to include your home or mailing address. So you don't want people knocking on your door with, with a script in hand. 
Whatever you do, don't use fancy fonts or embellish your cover with artwork of any kind. It's and tempting, but we, don't do and it. And we've seen it all. Some beautiful artwork, yeah. but, it's, but it has nothing yeah. to do with the script. And it doesn't look professional. Right. You also don't want to put your log line on your cover. You know, you may have the greatest log line ever written, but it can also be a great excuse for a reader who opens the script, sees your log line and says, oh, I already know what this is about. And they don't, they won't read your script. And as tempting as it may be, don't plaster copyright notices or WGA registration right. numbers on the cover of your script. Those are actually the signs of an amateur. Right. There's nothing wrong with getting a copyright or getting a, a script registered with the WGA, but you don't need to tell the world about it. It kind of makes you look a little paranoid. So I, I think, you know, it really goes without saying that your script needs to be properly formatted. Failure to format properly can hurt your chances in a screenplay contest. And poor formatting will kill your script's chances in the world of managers, agents, and producers. A script that looks like it was written by an amateur won't even get past page one. Right. I mean, your appearance on the page does mean something. So here are some basic formatting rules to keep in mind as you're getting your scripts ready to enter these contests. So let's number one, be sure that you're using a 12-point courier font even for the title page a screenplay contest is not the place to be experimental with different fonts and 12 point courier is definitely the standard not only for submitting scripts but it's the standard used throughout the industry use 12 point courier if you want your script to have that professional appearance and number two and we see this a lot don't cheat on your margins it just doesn't fool anybody. You know, readers can tell at a glance because they read a lot of scripts. They can tell at a glance if you're narrowing or expanding your margins in order to force a shorter or longer page count. Remember, again, these readers read a lot of scripts. Uh, so adjusted margins are an obvious red flag that you've doctored your formatting. And a lot of contests will simply disqualify your entry for non-standard formatting before it even gets read. Number three, another thing to avoid, and this often happens if you're using a free trial or a demo version of writing software, is the appearance of any kind of watermark on your pages. The industry standard program for writing scripts over the past few years has become final draft. It's not cheap. But if you want to save yourself a lot of time and aggravation while making your formatting industry perfect, investing in and updating the formatting program is well worth your cost. Yeah, when I first got Final Draft, it just killed me because it was like four hundred dollars, and I yeah. thought this is a waste of time. And you know, it just it really drove me nuts. But I finally bit the bullet, and it has just saved me so much time, and it does give you an instantly professional looking script. So number four, in terms of formatting, be conservative with your use of capital letters, caps, because the secret to, to success in a screenplay contest is to get the reader into the story as quickly as possible. You want them to get into sort of a rhythm as they turn your pages, which means you need to be consistent with your topography and particularly with your use of capital letters. The first time a character is introduced, scene slugs and in dialogue headers, that's appropriate for caps. That's it. Don't use your caps in dialogue or to emphasize action because that really does distract the reader even just for a millisecond or two. And you really don't want that. Composition skills uh, count. We completely understand that your screenplay isn't you know, exactly English literature, but that doesn't mean you, you can write with incorrect grammar, poor punctuation, awkward sentence structure, or uh, uh, faulty homonyms. You need to know how to spell the various forms of the word there, it's and where and apostrophes go, and how to be consistent with your pronouns and tenses. Right. And of course, not everybody is a grammar expert or grammar geek, you know. And for those folks, I just recommend going on Upwork or Fiverr.com and hire somebody to proofread your script. They can correct mistakes for you. And you'd be surprised at how many mistakes even English majors will make without knowing it. We have a little story about that. One of our first books we thought it was typographically, typographically perfect. And we had proofread it ourselves many, many times, just, I mean, over and over and over because we wanted it to be perfect. We also had professional friends uh, proofread it right, for ourselves. Right. So we thought we were pretty set. And then we hired an actual proofreader for I think like a hundred dollars and they found over 200 mistakes. So I just recommend using a real professional proofreader to clean your script up uh, if you have any tendency for hitting the wrong space bar. Uh, and um, I think 
we're at number six now, don't direct the movie. Filling a script up with camera moves like pan, dolly, tracking shot, close up, and all, all my all time favorite zoom in it might feel <laughs> good when you're writing them, but they don't belong in a screenplay submitted to a competition. You're the writer, not to the director. You're not the cinematographer or the editor. That stuff is all their job. And inserting these elements only takes the reader out of your story. Which is something you really don't want to do. And the same goes for littering your pages with things like cut to, continued, and more. Uh, those, those words and that, term, that terminology is really very old school stuff from the 70s and 80s. And today it simply drives readers crazy. Why? Because it slows down your story and their reading process. Sometimes formatting can seem weird and confusing, but if you have questions or concerns about the formatting re requirements, please take a look at um, Robert's oh, little book. This is my cue. Yeah. Uh, stop screwing around and format your screenplay like a pro. Right. Uh, I really wrote it in response to the fact that most people have trouble with the formatting. Um, you know, so you just want to, be, again, my book is available at Amazon. It's a very bottom line, straightforward guide to making your scripts read easily and professionally. I won't hype it too much, but everybody seems to love it. One of the great tips in your book is about making white space your friend. I have a script here, one of our favorite movies, Green Book. Mm. I happen to uh, win the best picture, best uh, original screenplay. And as you can tell, for those of you who haven't seen a professional script, there's uh, a lot of white space there. Yep, yep. And that's what makes it a good read because it's really about making things easy to read for a contest reader. You wanna make those readers happy. And nothing makes a reader more unhappy than having to wade through a script that's full of dense paragraphs of description or backstory. You want your script to read quickly and easily. So now let's talk about the strategy of writing a winning script. Well, one of the best ways to draw a reader in quickly is to make sure you have something actually happening on the first few pages. You want to avoid long set piece stage directions anywhere in your script, but you really want to avoid long blocks of text describing a scene on your first page. We've opened scripts and it look, they look like history textbooks and it immediately stops the reader. So you want to get your characters talking and moving very early and you do that by setting up your hero protagonist right away. Who is he or she? What's their big problem? What's standing in their way? You know, if you can set those things up in your opening pages, you'll hook your reader right off the bat. Another strategy for winning a screenplay contest is to write a script with a highly marketable concept. Before you start writing, ask yourself a question. Is your story the kind of movie today's audience wants to see? Is it a currently popular genre. Right, and you, you kind of need to know what's in the marketplace before you start writing a script, I think. Uh, you, you certainly don't want to write something that you don't have a chance of selling or, or that won't win a contest because it's simply out of touch with the current zeitgeist, you know? So you look at current marketplace tends, uh, trends, uh, which currently tends to favor female leads and stories of progressive social and cultural issues with very inclusive casting elements. And I just want to put, say, uh, if you do have something that you're very passionate about and it's not really have anything to do with current issues um, or what the genre is right now, uh, don't forget about that. Sit on that because as soon as you become um, Sorkin or somebody right. great, then you can uh, write and produce and get your movies made. Also things change, you know, right. the, the, the right. whole culture evolves right. constantly. Right. So winning scripts always have two things going for them, a marketable concept and a clear theme. Without a clear theme, you won't have strong conflict and the reader won't be able to tell if your screenplay is actually about something. Right. I mean, theme seems like an amorphous no notion, but think about this. Even an action thriller about ruthless bank robbers who take hostages. That's a pretty basic concept. We've seen a lot of those movies, but those even need a strong theme to make us care about the outcomes for the characters. You know, we saw that in the movie from uh, the 2010 movie, The Town, which was written by Peter Craig, Aaron Stockard, and Ben Affleck. It's a very good movie. We love the movie. Everybody likes that movie because it has a beginning, middle, and an end. Right, right. With uh, so you know, with that, uh, it's it started out on a page one with a violent bank robbery turns into a story about a guy who desperately in search of some sort of emotional attachment and a serious need 
to change his ways. Yes, it, became, it was an action flick, but it becomes a very personal story. It's a fairly straightforward metamorphosis theme with the hero fighting to become a better person. And by the end of the movie, we really do care about him. So if you haven't seen that movie, you should take a look at it. Mm -hmm. One of the basic issues for any screenplay, whether you're entering a contest or sending a script off to a producer, be careful with your page count. Try to avoid going over 120 pages. A properly written script should play one minute of screen time per script page. Right, that means a 90 page script might be regarded a little bit more favorably than say a 180 page historical epic, simply because every producer is highly budget content conscious and it's a lot easier to raise financing for a 90 minute film than for a three hour saga. And, and again, that's not to say that we have not recently seen movies that are two to three hours long, sure. but generally those are made by experienced filmmakers and they've proven, they have a proven um, track record. So, and then you want to work hard to make your hero as unique and memorable as possible and to make your protagonist objectives crystal clear as early in the script as possible. You know, you want the reader to know what the problems are at the very onset and that you, they, that they're pulled into your story as quickly as possible. Right. Your characters need to be faced with and ultimately overcome insurmountable obstacles. They, they're, they're going after something and they have to overcome these obstacles in order to get what they want, achieve their goals. So the but one thing you want to do is make it difficult. Don't make things too easy on them or let them get, a, get what they want very easily. Uh, it's simply that's boring, right? Uh, you always want to make sure that the stakes for your, your heroes are high enough and your reader isn't going to care about if you don't, your reader won't care about what happens to them. And there always need to be consequences for these characters. Things can't just happen one thing after another, and there need to be bumps in the road. So when your characters first show up in your script, keep their descriptions brief and specific. That means, you know, maybe two to three lines that really give us a good feel for that character. You need to know your character's world inside and out and give your reader an interesting and unique glimpse of your character's worldview or overall attitude. Yeah, one of the tricks I've always used is I actually write a full page biography on a character before I even start the script so that I can ask answer the questions I'm gonna have as I write the script. If I know exactly where the character comes from and what, what they really want in life, then I know that in every scene I can use that material. So when you first introduce your characters, you can briefly reveal their thoughts and opinions but try to do it with a word or two, not with a paragraph or two. It's like making a new friend. Exactly, exactly. Uh, you always want your characters to be in obvious contrast and conflict with each other. After all, you know, there's nothing more boring than a scene in which characters sit around agreeing with each other. And as the story progresses, your protagonist must always be reacting to the events of the story and eventually changing in some way that supports your story's overall theme. And there's that word again, theme, you know, theme being what's your story really about? It's, it may not be about the bank robbery, but more about the relationship problems this guy has. So when you're writing to win a screenplay contest, your job is really to entertain the reader. An entertained, engaged reader is a happy reader. As I said before, happy readers somehow always manage to discover the winning scripts. And try to write as visually as possible. Remember, a screenplay or television script isn't a novel. It's supposed to be a movie or a TV show. That means a reader needs to actually see the movie just by reading the words on your pages. So write visually and avoid explanations. Show, don't tell. Right. Uh, that's really the rule for everything when you're writing a script. You know, because it's not a novel, you also want to avoid being perceived as literary or difficult to understand. So you need to avoid kind of obscure, erudite vocabulary, and as much as possible, reduce the use of superfluous adjectives and adverbs. I actually go through my scripts and cut out all modifiers. And boy, you can imagine how much how much you lose it that way, but your script turns into, into something very, very tight. So your, your, your descriptions really simply portray action, location, and character. So don't use description to tell a reader what your character is thinking or feeling. Remember, movies and TV shows are visually mediums, uh, visual mediums. So only describe what what we the reader or the audience will actually be able to see. Descriptions of action should only depict movement, events, or physical activity taking place on the screen. 
So you want to try to avoid using phrases like we see or we hear, you know, we see the hero do this. No, we simply describe what happens as it is happening. In other words, instead of, for example, instead of saying we see a man running away, keep it simple. Just say a man runs away. Always use the present simple tense, and that makes your, your script read like a movie is seen. It's not always easy, but try to avoid overwriting. You're, <laughs> you're accused of that. I'm you're, famous, you're for, famous that. for that. Right. Uh, your stage directions and descriptive passages should be succinct and concise, telling the reader only what is necessary to inform them of the visuals of what's taking place. Again, we know that's hard to do, but you need to try. Right. Also, and this is something we see in a lot of first drafts, don't repeat information already included in your scene heading or your slug line. Work on using the perfect verb for your character's action or behavior. It's, sometimes it's not the first one that comes to mind. The perfect verb is the one that implies the character's state of mind at that moment. But that doesn't mean you can use a verb that tells us something we won't be able to see. Okay, so one way to keep from overriding stage directions is to keep them down to four lines or less. When you write long descriptive stage directions, longer than three or four lines, readers often won't even, even skim over them. They'll simply skip to the entire paragraph and get to the dialogue, which is where the real action is between characters in most scenes. You'll know you're overriding your stage directions when you start to describe the props within a scene very specifically. Well, we've seen a lot of that, you know, unless a prop or a certain aspect of a location actually plays a critical role in the overall story or, or you're planting uh, a MacGuffin that you're going to reveal later, just indicate the presence of the prop or the location and just move on. You know, if your character handles a gun, for example, try not to write Quote, he carefully aims the glistening chrome-plated rim-fired colt at the target. When you can just say, he aims the gun. That would be good in a book, though. Right, in a book, that's fine. Yeah. That brings us to the issue of dialogue. Uh, we've seen scripts with very unique concepts and emotionally engaging themes uh, score poorly in a contest because the characters are telling the story instead of living inside the story. An obvious indication of this problem usually surfaces in the first few pages when a character starts explaining things instead of doing things. You know, using exposition to set up a story too quickly sort of holds the reader at an arm's distance from the characters. And that makes it difficult for the reader to become invested in anything that happens to your characters. So don't let your characters talk about their, what they're doing or talk about the reasons they're doing something. Just let your characters do stuff and their actions will re reveal their motivation better than any long speeches ever will. Right. If you listen to people talk, real people in real life, you realize very few people always say exactly what they mean. People tend to speak very obliquely, and we understand what they really mean through their subtext of their words, you know, body language, things like that. So, so don't let your characters use dialogue that's, quote, on the nose or so explicit and on point that it removes all doubt about its intent, you know, because it also removes any potential conflict or drama. And try to avoid having all your characters sound alike. In other words, if a reader were to cover the character's name a above the dialogue and read it, they should be able to tell whose dialogue that is. Uh, in real life, people don't sound alike because they don't speak alike. Neither should any of your characters. And also, this is, again, something we see a lot of that's really irritating. Don't write out accents or dialects. Simply indicate either in a parenthetical or a very brief description line that a character speaks in a specific way or with a specific foreign accent. You know, other than that, avoid the use of parentheticals as much as possible and never, ever use them to describe physical action that belongs in a slug line. Early in our careers, we discovered that most of the so-called professional readers and development executives rarely read past the first 10 pages of any script. Knowing that, we created the Wiki Screenplay Contest. Right, it was pretty, it was actually pretty horrifying to discover that readers and producers read the first 10 pages and then decide, make a decision based on that. So the wiki became known as the world's fastest screenplay contest because you really only need to submit the first 10 pages of your screenplay for our readers to accurately judge the entire script. Which shows you how important those 10 pages are. Right. Uh, that might, they, you know, that may sound a little ruthless, but it's exactly how scripts move up the food chain at major studios. And just like the major studios, contest readers 
are looking for your first 10 pages to really take off. That means your concept needs to be clear with your protagonists and their objectives set up in a you know, very sh fairly short order. It also means your opening scenes need to kind of start in the middle of things happening. And those things need to impact your characters very quickly. That's one reason the use of flashbacks early in a script can be tricky and maybe even a little dangerous because the flashbacks often really bog things down. Right, we see a lot of people using flashbacks to explain their story. And unless a flashback really and truly clues the reader into something that happened in the past that has an immediate impact on what's going on in the story or is going to happen, it, it only confuses readers. It pulls them out of the present moment and it really slows things down. You certainly want to avoid what I call explainer flashbacks that tell a lot of backstory. When the whole point of a script is to tell the reader a story that's moving forward. Right, again, you should be able to read, as Suzanne said earlier, you, you need to be able to read a script every page in 60 seconds or less, the same time it would take to play on the screen. Remember, the secret to making a reader happy is to make your script read quickly and easily. And again, a happy reader is much more likely to single your script out as a contest winner. Then, and, and this is crucial, when you come to the end of your script, based on everything that's gone on before your script, try to fulfill the reader's expectations as logically and as memorably as possible. Because a good script leaves the reader satisfied, both logically and emotionally. You want to be sure that everything makes sense by the time you type fade out. When all the conflicts and dramatic beats finally pay off and fulfill expectations, you have a good script with a good ending. I personally like happy Hollywood endings. She does indeed. <laughs> and those really and, uh, rank very high. Right. And, and Suzanne is very good at determining what, when you look at a movie, why the ending doesn't work. If it doesn't answer all the questions you have, that's a problem. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a happy ending, but it does need to end with you realizing what has happened and why. And it makes all sense, right? Yeah. So after you've entered a screenplay contest, one thing you really wanna take care of is be, be kind of uh, precise about this. You wanna calendar the deadline for these entries yeah. and the announcement dates, keep track of this stuff. And then you have to be a little patient waiting to hear how your script did in that particular contest. In the meantime, review any paid feedback you've received and then let it rest. We have many people who um, uh, are very upset uh, by um, the reader's uh, notes. Um, and it's really just objective uh, notes. Uh, a lot of our readers are pretty experienced, but it is your script and you need to let it rest and think about it. Right, so but keep this in mind. Winning a contest is not easy. So don't, as Suzanne said, don't overreact either to your scores or to the written feedback you receive because it is after all your script. So you wanna be careful about making too many changes too quickly. You wanna use the feedback you agree with and then get busy rewriting. We've seen many scripts finish far out of the running uh, and only to come back as a second draft, which was good and ultimately place as finalists and even win a contest. We've seen quite a few of those. Yep. Yeah. Yep, because their writing gets better and better. It's all about rewriting, frankly. So be honest with yourself and analyze the script yourself. Put yourself in the position of the reader. Look at the same elements that contest readers are looking at and ask the same tough questions. Is there a strong, identifiable protagonist we care about? Is there an equally strong antagonist with an identifiable indif agenda? Is there conflict in every scene? Or are there scenes that are merely placeholders, not driving the story forward? Is it a marketable concept? Is this a movie an audience will pay to see? Is the dialogue unique to each character? Does the dialogue make things progress? Or are the characters just talking? Your dialogue really needs to make the scenes move forward. Right. The other question you want to ask is, will the reader be emotionally invested in your characters and what they're going through? You know, you're asking somebody to read from page one all the way through fade out. It takes a lot of effort. And they, the reader actually has to care about what happens to your characters and to, so that they can feel involved with your story. So that means your theme needs to be relatable and easily identifiable. If we can't tell what your story is actually about beyond its plot points, you may not have a story worth reading 
uh, or worth a reader's time and effort. Right. Again, we go back to theme. Your, your story has to be about something more than just action. So that brings up the question of pacing. Your reader at a screenplay contest has to be able to read your script with some tempo. That's why I'm particularly a big fan of a lot of white space on the page, because the easier your script reads, the better the pace, the faster a reader will feel energized and become a part of the action. Winning scripts are often real page turners. And of course, your script must have a recognizable dramatic structure. That means a pretty obvious beginning, middle and end. It's a classic three act structure with a story driven by a series of inciting in in incidents. Right. We often see writers try to do something very clever, very different by ignoring three, three act structure. And while those scripts can be very interesting, they rarely satisfy the readers and they rarely win a contest. You need to remember a good worthwhile screenplay contest is about the writing, which means the tone of your writing needs to match the time or the theme, the genre and the, and the characters beat. A comedy script should be fun to read while a horror script should send chills up your spine. Right, and finally, be true to your concept. Is it high concept, like how your hero saves the planet from a meteor storm? Or is it low concept, like uh, the story of a nun coming to terms with her lack of faith? Whatever the concept is, whether it's superhero action, a personal tragedy, solving a crime, climbing a mountain, whatever it is, commit to your concept in every scene and make sure your protagonist is active in concert with that theme throughout the script. So before we wrap up, um, uh, when you're sending your hard work to a screenplay contest, be sure to only submit what that particular competition specifically asked for. You have to be very careful with this. Right. It's always disappointing for writers and very frustrating for readers and judges to have a script disqualified because it was uploaded as a Word document or as a pages file or even as an editable final draft file. As I said before, you want to always submit a PDF file. You don't want to send anyone a file of your script that can be altered, which is why, why we require in our contest um, uh, scripts to send us as a PDF file. It protects you and saves a lot of possible issues down the road. Uh, in legitimate contests, only want to see the PDF of your screenplay. But, you know, writers often send along all kinds of things. We've seen synopses, treatments, character bios, which is all, you, all stuff you should write for yourself, but don't send it to the contest. We all, and then we see fancy cover art. We see posters. They, people even send in co uh, coverages from other contests along with their script. None of that stuff helps your chances of winning and only serves to distract readers from what you want them to do. Give your screenplay a fair and honest evaluation. So only submit what a contest specifically asks for. It's truly a case of less is more. I see that we have quite a few questions. Uh, we have quite a few people that wrote questions to us the last few days, as well as questions uh, from the webinar today. Um, so let's talk about one of the, so before we go to the questions, mm -hmm. why don't we talk about an example uh, to let you know how we feel about uh, the structure of scripts. Let's talk about one of the all-time great scripts that everyone should be familiar with. Sure, sure. I think, you know, reading, this is, and I could go on about this, the best education you can get as a screenwriter is to read a lot of very good scripts that will teach you the entire craft. You don't need to go to film school or get a master's degree in screenwriting to win a screenplay contest but you really do need to be familiar with successful films of the past because when a movie stands the test of time, there's a reason. They start with a great script that embodies everything we've been talking about. So we've all seen movies and TV shows um, starring our favorite actors that were box office disasters. 99% of the time, those movies failed because of serious script problems that were either undetected or were ignored and audience expectations just weren't met. So here's, I'm going to give you an example that everybody has seen at least once, I hope. And it's an old classic. Uh, and we've seen it probably 50 times. And not to say there aren't many more, but this but, happens to be our favorite. But this movie never fails to pull us in simply because of the strength of its dialogue. And that movie is Casablanca. One of my all-time favorites. And it's not just because Bogart's portrayal of the character Rick Blaine is so underplayed. 
It's because every line of the dialogue is precise to the point and moves each scene forward in the story. Exactly. I mean, the dialogue in it is so crisp and so driven by the point of the theme. And the theme is very clear in the movie, if you think about it. It's not about uh, a gangster uh, running from the Nazis. It's about the sacrifice of love for a higher purpose. So keep that in mind when you're writing your scripts and getting ready to submit to a contest. If your theme is clear, everything else will follow. So okay. let's, let's jump into some questions. So we have quite a few. So let's start with Max. Uh, what's better to write, a feature script or a TV script? Well, that's a great question, Max. Uh, in today's marketplace, a lot of feature films are going straight to the streamers, to Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, uh, what's the other one, Peacock. They're, they're putting real movies up there uh, that normally uh, wouldn't make it to the theaters, perhaps. So I, I think just writing a great script is the key, whether you're thinking of television or you're thinking of the feature film world. Uh, feature films are quite a bit more difficult to sell these days. A lot of television shows are looking for writers. If you're right. going to write a TV script, look for a show that you absolutely love, that you can't stop watching, that's on the air and you think will be on the air for at least six months or a year. It might get picked up and renewed because they're always looking for new material and new writers. And if you can write a spec script for a television show that's a hit and it proves that you have an ear for their character's dialogue, you'll find yourself uh, moving right up the food chain. Um, so Felicity said, should I register my screenplay with the Writers Guild? Absolutely. Um, everyone should do that. Um, don't necessarily put it on your, um, on your script, but it gives you a sense of security up to a certain point. And it's always, a, it's always good to be registered with a screenplay. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. It, it does give you some level of protect, protection. One of the issues is, uh, and I'm sure everybody here understands that, your idea per se is not protectable even under US copyright law. Right. It's only the expression of your idea. It's the writing, it's the words on the page that's protectable by copyright. But if you have an idea for let's say an Italian family in the mafia, well, guess what? It's been done a thousand times, but it can be done again. You just can't use the word the godfather in the title. Right, okay, we have another question from Sean. If I win a, a place in a contest, will it be easier to get an agent? It's never easy to get an agent. And it also depends <laughs> how hard you wanna work, Sean. Right. Uh, just because you win a screenplay contest, there is no guarantee that a producer and agent is going to see it. You need to work on the next phase. Right. Yeah. It's, it's all hard work. Yeah, exactly. As, as they say, the best place to find a helping hand is at the end of your arm. So if you have a contest winner, a, a good script, then you need to get it in the hands of agents. I would start with going to managers first because agents just want to make the deals. Managers will actually give you some guidance. And we do have a we have a webinar coming up in a month or so about manager, managers and agents that I recommend everybody take a look at. So, but, but another way is to find agents and, and managers. You have to self-promote yourself uh, online. Uh, there's just look up. Uh, a lot of writers are putting themselves up on the screen, right. kind of like a resume. Well, that, that speaks to a question uh, Michael has here. He says, what chance does a writer have without an agent? Well, I think you have a pretty good chance if you have a really good script. And again, as Suzanne said, you gotta, you're got you in the business of yourself That's as right. a writer. That's so, right. you know, you need to have a website. You need to have a social media presence. You need to be out there communicating and joining networking groups. Uh, an agent is really the, it, that comes last. Now, Michael, I do want to tell you, uh, it has happened that uh, people have had their scripts bought without an agent. It's very rare, but you could be sitting in a, a theater play watching your friend have his famous acting part, and you could be sitting next to an agent who is scouting all the actors, and right. he can uh, recommend an agent for you. I mean, in show business, anything goes. You just need to put yourself out there. Right. So it is possible, but it's much harder. Right. It doesn't, it doesn't happen sitting on your hands. Right, you right. You have to get, kind of get out in the world and mix it up. So Shannon here says, my script is 140 pages. Is that too long for a contest? I think that would be the maximum length. Yeah. I would prefer to see a script of 110 pages. And so would the readers, simply because readers get paid for reading scripts. 
Uh, the more scripts they read, the more money they make. And frankly, the fresher they feel when they come to a, a new assignment. A 140 page script, I'll bet you, is overwritten and we can cut 20 pages out of that without losing, easily without losing anything you would still have a good story right. My, michael has another question here he's got a lot of questions he says he uses movie magic screenwriter and it's been used by established writers it formats it for you do i have an opinion my opinion is i've used them all uh final draft is better and it's really the industry standard so um that's the one i would go with frankly. so a uh, marie here has uh, a question why do you have more than one screenplay contest well, because they're both different. They're very different. They have different sets of readers, different sets of judges, mm -hmm. and different uh, levels of feedback. You know, the wiki, uh, we pride ourselves on being, quote, the world's fastest screenplay contest. If you want fast feedback, that's the contest for you. If you want greater in-depth uh, feedback, the Santa Barbara International Screenplay Awards is, I think, among the highest rated in terms of professional feedback from working professionals. And Elliot here has, um, my script is a historical biography that requires a lot of description to establish period and the setting. How does that affect what you said about white space? Well, well. <laughs> it makes it a challenge for you, the writer. The thing to keep in mind, however, is that most readers are very smart. Mm -hmm. So are producers and agents and managers. They're very much aware of what historical context is like. And we've seen a lot of movies you know, we, we've seen all the hist historical bios and dramas. Um, so you don't need to oversell antebellum uh, pre-Civil War South. That can, we understand it. The minute you say the Deep South in the 1850s, we know what that looks like. So you don't need to go into paragraph after paragraph of description. And we have seen a lot of that. If your first page looks like your high school history textbook, that's a problem. And again, if you are passionate about this, put it aside and write something else that will uh, get more of more coverage in the mainstream media. Um, let's see, Daniela said, should I enter more than one contest at a time? Nothing wrong with that. Well, yeah, um, you know, the temptation is, if you can afford it, is to enter as many as possible. Uh, I think the only problem is if you enter more than two or three, you you will get two or three opinions if you enter 10 you you'll get 10 different opinions and i think what's most important is you need to do your research find the best screenplay contest not just ours but there's a handful of others that are just as good we feel and uh just enter a few and then sit on those comments and see if you agree with it and work on your script and then resubmit to some more screenplay contests right and michael here said um i use see it is subject subjectively in judging something um let me see to consider can readers and judges put aside any bias they may have oh that's a great question what do you think of a genre specific contest if i send my horror screenplay to a wide open contest all genres is it going to be read by a whore, by someone who is reading horror or whoever well our, the readers in our contest at the Santa Barbara International Screenplay Awards and the Wiki Screenplay Contest, they are not genre specific because in our contest, it's all about the writing. You can write a great horror film that it is so compelling, has a great theme and has some meaning to it. And it's going to appeal to all readers. Or you can write a fabulous uh, rom-com, for example, that has real problems. It's all about the writing. Uh, genres are all over the place. If you look at what's out in the current marketplace, what you're seeing on television, what you're seeing in the theaters, there's no real specific genre other than Black Panther and the superhero stuff that is really driving the market today. What drives everything is a good script. And that's my personal opinion. I wouldn't worry about, does the, has this judge ever read a horror film? Our judges have read everything, believe me. So it's all about the writing. Uh, Kurt says, I've entered a couple of contests and they're late in telling me whether I won or not. Is that That's okay? Bad. That's bad. That's bad. Yeah. They shouldn't be late. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, communication has to be 
prompt with every contest that's worth anything. Right. Uh, if you send an email, you have a question about the contest or about the readers or, mm -hmm. or any aspect of it, you need to get an answer within 24 hours. We try very hard to um, be on that time basis where uh, we feel that if the writer takes the time to write us or to send a screenplay con uh, a screenplay to us to be judged, it's highly important. And especially if they give you your money, sure, your fee, it's sure. very important that you get feedback as soon as possible. Yeah, one, of the thing, one of the things you're paying for when you enter a contest is communication. You know, and if you're not getting that communication, you're not getting what you paid for. That just, I find that really offensive, frankly. Uh, so Paige here says, I think we addressed this. Uh, my characters speak with an accent. How do I show that in dialogue? You say it That's once. It's pretty easy. You say it once. And I think yeah. we, we mentioned that yeah. earlier. You yeah. say it once, either in a, in a parenthetical under the character name, or you say it in the stage direction. Very, very succinctly, you say, this person speaks with a Russian accent. And I never say it again. Don't put it in your dialogue right. itself. Because it's distracting otherwise. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Jack said, is it better to enter a big contest like the Nichols or to look for a newer, smaller contest? Well, it depends on what you're after. You know, if you're if you're entering the Nichols, you're going to get kind of, I think, templated responses. You're you're gonna have to be competing with several thousand screenplay people, screenwriters entering the same contest at the same time, uh, and very little else. Uh, a smaller contest, as long as they have the kinds of judges that are actually working professionals, and they have readers who aren't just film school students or unpaid interns, that's a valuable contest. I, I, I feel like I need to mention Please do not enter a screenplay contest thinking you're going to get an agent or a manager. If that does happen, that is wonderful. But generally speaking, a lot of screenplay contests offer false promises. Entering a screenplay contest should solely be because you want constructive feedback to improve your script so your script is ready to be read by producers and directors. You generally have one shot when a producer picks up a script, that's that true. is, so that's very important. Very true, um, very true. And then Michael says, did we cover all of his? He's got one about margins. Here. Okay, I mean, well, that is important. Michael, you're very detailed, Michael. Uh, he says, uh, uh, you mentioned margins, but I've used forced page breaks to make it easier to read. Should I not do that? Forced page breaks are fine. Again, it's all about white space. Whatever provides you with a page that reads quickly mm -hmm. is fine. You can alter the program a little bit. You can adjust things a little bit, but don't fudge those margins. Don't make wider or narrower margins for any reason. Better to just have a little bit of extra white space at the bottom of a page than it is to have narrower or fatter margins. Because again, it doesn't fool anybody, man. I mean, a reader picks your script up and they can flip through it and tell right away, is this thing properly formatted? And if it isn't, guess what? you're not going to win that contest. It's almost like, I'm sure many of you have been to when, when we used to have bookstores. Nowadays, we don't have that many, but you go to a, the library, the big store right. or the bookstore, and you're looking for something good to read and you pick up a book, you judge it by the cover, and then you open it up and you read the first few pages and either it gets your attention or you close it and you go on to the next book. Right. That's pretty much how a reader is. They're, and they're, they're very experienced. Yeah, they're just people, but they want to read quickly because they want to get into your script quickly. They want to right. give you those scores. They want to they want to find that winning script. Everybody's looking for the best possible script. Nobody's prejudging anything, believe me. So Perry has a question. What has a better chance of winning, a comedy or something dramatic? Well, comedies are difficult to write. That's that's yeah. the challenge there. That's that's uh, I, I think. I think twice when somebody says, uh, which should I write, comedy or, or a dramatic piece? Because they're two different animals completely. And um, comedy is very different. It's very difficult to write. And a dramatic piece, um, if you're a funny person, you're going to have a hard time writing something too dramatic. Although some people have crossed over. But there's a reason we see bridesmaids 
or the hangover on television constantly because they're very funny they were massive hits yeah and that's the only two comedies i could uh, talladega nights maybe we see well, there, that there are quite a few there but, are quite a few but you see a lot more dramas out there but generally comedy writers who have hits stick with comedy writing and dramatic pieces usually they stick with dramatic pieces right now right. actors can cross over a little bit but um that doesn't always happen um Allison says here, we have so many questions. Uh, if I win, how do I get producers to know about me? Great question. That's everybody. Everybody has that question. You do it by networking, by promoting by yourself. Hard work. Hard work. Yeah. You know, writing is the fun part. Mm -hmm. The real challenge is marketing yourself and your material. And again, as Suzanne said, get out in the world, go to plays, go to film festivals, go to plays, take classes, uh, watch as many uh, award winning movies as, as possible. But the most important thing before you even talk to anybody, you have to have a great script because that is your calling card. Exactly. It all starts with the script. Exactly. So I think that we're, we're really out of time here. Uh, one thing I want to suggest again is take a look at this little book right? Stop screwing around and format your screenplay like a pro. That will answer a lot of these formatting questions. And then I've got a couple of other little books you might be interested in. And I'm going to send everybody a copy of this one. Everybody who's here today, I'm going to send them this book, which is Stop Screwing Around and Win Your Next Screenplay Contest. And the next level up from that, winning a contest is one thing. Selling your script is another. There's a certain way to write a script that's going to sell. And that's my third book, stop screwing around and write a screenplay that sells. They're all on Amazon, but I'm going to send you one today for at no cost to you just for attending so that you can kind of summarize all the stuff in your mind. So, and we want to thank everyone for taking the time and because I know everyone's time is very valuable, but we have so much knowledge and we love teaching people because we've been through this for years right, the industry right. we we lived and are living our big dream and uh we just have a lot to share and we want to help you uh, get into the business as easily as possible don't forget it's about a script first right all right thanks everybody for attending and if, and, you, have, if you have further questions just drop us an email right. at info at santa barbara screenplay awards.com right and for those who have signed up and um couldn't make the um webinar uh we will be sending them a copy sure we'll correct? send a, we'll send a copy of the video yeah watch, yeah for sure yeah anyway thank you sure. so much all right um and greetings from santa barbara yeah. and we'll see you in the movies